Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in uh, this video we're going to look at doing a project that uh, a lot of other folks on YouTube have done uh, but uh, I'm just really realizing the need that I have to do it myself. I think most of you are probably familiar with this saw. This is probably one of the best tools, most useful tools I've ever bought from Harbor Freight. This is a portable bandsaw, of course, with the six inch throat. And a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen where people have taken this bandsaw uh, or the Porter Cables or several other brands and mounted them in a vertical, pos vertical position uh, and manufactured a table, cutting table, to go with it. Uh, I've got a vertical bandsaw now, a Delta. I'm looking at it through the, uh, uh, through the machinery here, but it was made in 1964, and it is an actual metal and wood cutting uh, bandsaw, 14 inch bandsaw, but the gearbox is bad in it. Uh, when I got it, it was actually a dumpster recovery. It was being thrown away, and uh, they said the gearbox wasn't any good. Well, I've had it probably for 25 plus years uh, and I've used it for some wood projects and it works okay with uh, thin sheet metal, 20 gauge, something like that. It'll cut it fine, but it's just too fast for, for uh, uh, anything over about an eighth of an inch thick. So that's going to be a project one day, rebuilding that uh, gearbox in that band, uh, in that band saw. Uh, it's got several issues. If you pour a quart of gear oil in it and come back the next day, it's on the floor but the, uh, the, it won't change gears either. And I've got the horizontal bandsaw, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, you've seen me use in a vertical position. It works well uh, too and is easily converted to vertical, just simply stand it up, but it's got a small table on it. And it really needs, for safety's sake, it really needs a, a bigger working table. And the portable bandsaw that I just showed you I could mount it uh, in a vertical position, but I use it way too much handheld uh, to consider uh, mounting it in a sem semi-perfect, uh, uh, semi-permanent situation. So what I did, uh, I went to uh, Harbor Freight the other day, right around Christmas. They had these portable bandsaws on sale. I don't think they sell the six inch one anymore. I don't see it, uh, uh, don't see it listed in their catalogs. But they had this uh, portable uh, 10 inch bandsaw. And they had it on sale for $94. But you know the story. Uh, they probably had four of them in the store when they put them on sale, and if you weren't standing there waiting when the sale flyer come out, you didn't get one of them. So I came back home. Uh, I actually got a rain check from uh, the Harbor Freight that I could get it whenever they come in, but I'm sure dozens of other people did the same thing, and it was going to be a gamble. It's about a 25-mile drive each direction to, uh, to the closest Harbor Freight from me. So I sent to come home. And I ordered this one uh, online. It took it, it said three days shipment, but it actually took it about nine days to get here. But that was uh, including the, it was during the holiday seasons. I ordered it on December the 26th and got it on January the 3rd. So that's about uh, five, six, seven, that's about eight days. But let's open this up right quick and uh, see what it looks like. Well, well, it's even in a, a case. I guess that was probably in the ad saying that it was in the case. And I can tell you, it is considerably heavier than that six inch one. Any of you that's bought the six inch one are probably familiar with the fact that uh, it came with a blade 
but it clearly stated on the blade and on the saw itself that that blade was not good for metal. It was only good for wood. And honestly, I've never uh, found a whole lot of need for a portable bandsaw for wood. So it got thrown away pretty quick and a proper blade put on it. I don't think this one even comes with a blade, if I remember the ad correctly. This one's pretty much the same size. It's just designed a little different, uh, which is perfectly uh, fine for what I'm going to do or for what I'm using it for. Uh, one thing I do see, it does have a hefty guide plate on here, which is uh, going to be beneficial for mounting the working plate on uh, or the material plate. So let me get this case set to the side. I've got some blades. Uh, I'll get one of those out, and we'll get a blade installed on this. Okay, inside the uh, uh, packaging is another set of brushes for the motor. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and put a label on these and mark what they're for. All right, I've got a little parts bin over here that I keep brushes, extra set of brushes that come with various equipment in, so it'll be there five, ten years from now if I ever need them. A couple things I noticed about this, this one does not come with a trigger lock. Uh, so what I'll have to do is put either a switchable receptacle or a foot switch. I'll get think about that later. But one thing I did like on this is instead of having the little knob inside the trigger for the speed control, it actually has a, a dial on the side here. From, looks like from one to five and then a maximum. All right, let's see if we can get a, get a blade installed. I looked in my supply and I've got these Linux blades, uh, 14, 18 TPI. Uh, there was three pieces in this box, and that's the last one. They're 44 and 7 8 inches or 1140 millimeter. All right, be sure I got the, the teeth headed in the right direction. And then there's a latch on the front to secure that in. Now let's give it a quick spin. Be sure the blade tracks correctly. That's the maximum speed. Let's see. I'm going to look this over. I've already spotted a couple tapped holes already. It's got this bumper on here, uh, five millimeter tapped holes. Looks like will be ideal for mounting. Uh, long arm up here. This is basically going to mount something like this uh, in a vertical position. This will come off and there'll be a 10 by 10 steel plate on here. So I'll look over this some and uh, uh, get that right in my mind, get a material list together and get that ordered. And then we'll come back and we'll actually start putting this together uh, for a, basically a permanent vertical mount. All right, I looked around through the attic in the tin barn, uh, second floor, and found this, uh, uh, I'm guessing it was a typing table, but it was part of an office clean out. Uh, years ago, I've had it uh, upstairs in the tin barn, just waiting for an opportunity to use it. 
and it's got a good footprint to it and it's good a uh, good well-built table so I think it will uh, work quite well as a as a base to mount this on uh, but it's a little bit low the, the working surface will be right here so when planning the material getting together the material to make the mount out of I'm going to start out See if I can get stuff out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. Table's actually got some storage under here as well. But I'm going to take this piece of, uh, uh, I believe that's about 3 inch, yeah, 3 inch by about 12 inch, uh, 8 inch thick flat bar. That's what will be mounted down to the table. Then there'll be a couple of uprights. And the length for these uprights and the piece that will go across them. Something like that. We'll get all this welded up in a minute. But that with the saw setting on here will put the working table height at the same height as that uh, delta band saw. Then on each end of this will be a couple uprights will be welded on, holes in here to match the, uh, the holes on the existing saw, same thing over here. And once we get all that mounted, we'll determine where we want to put it at the table so that the work surface is about flush with, with the front here and it's turned that uh, perpendicular to this edge. So let's go over to the welding table now and get these pieces welded up and get ready to, uh, to actually uh, attach them to the table. All right, well, I think we're ready to start welding the pieces up. Uh, again, I've got the exhaust fan going over here in this side of the barn, so you're going to hear some background noise. I'm going to be using the Fortney Easy Weld 140. Uh, that I introduced in the last video. I'm still getting accustomed to it, still getting used to it. Uh, if you're not familiar with flux core, there's a lot of smoke and a lot of spatter with it. And flux core, of course, does leave a uh, uh, does leave a, a shield of flux on. just a little bit more wire and may need to up the, the voltage just a little. I'm, I'm still getting accustomed to all this. A little more spatter than I like, but again, that's one of the characteristics of flux core.
I think I might get the hang of this uh, MIG welding with the flux core. Seems the biggest uh, biggest control issue I'm having right now is uh, the distance between my puddle and the end of the wire. I've just got to again keep experimenting with it until I get that figured out. Okay, I'm pretty well satisfied with the welds on here. They're not the prettiest in the world, but I'm, I'm assured myself and I'm confident that I've got good penetration on all of them. Uh, everything should be stout enough to hold that saw in place. So I'm gonna let this cool down, clean it up a little bit, get a, a coat of paint on it. Then we'll go back over to the table and Mount it on the table, or mount the saw on this, see where we want it on the table, mount it on the table, and then start working on our uh, workpiece or our workbench. All right, our piece is cooled off and I uh, got some paint on it, and it's dry enough, about as dry as it's going to get, as humid as it is here today. Before I did all this welding, I put a hole in the center of this bottom plate and two holes in each end. Figured it'd be easier to do them ahead of time. I've got a hole in the center of the table and for now I'm just gonna set this in that center, that center hole. Uh, put a nut up under here. Washer and nut. And we'll, uh, we'll use that as a starting position. The saw has uh, some tapped holes in the sides over here where the rubber bumper was. I've cut that bumper back just a little bit. I'll zoom in in a minute and show you these uh, uh, offsets or set of standoffs that I made for each side. Let's see if all the measurements going to work now. Everything kind of twisted and drew up a little bit in the welding. But I come back over here and got this one started on this side. Then I was able to bend this out just a little bit, get that one started. Now we'll try the top. All right, I knew I'd measured all that and had done a dry fit on the workbench. Now, that feels pretty good as it is and I think it's going to be plenty stout when I get the other get the other screws uh, or bolts 
through this end of the table. If not, I've got back here on the uh, on the back of the saw the handle, which is uh, a socket head cap screw. I can take that off and fabricate a bracket, but I think that's plenty stout. It's it's holding it tight to the table now. Let me zoom in so that you can see the uh, the brackets or the offsets. You can see there's one right there uh, to offset this part of the construction of the saw. I did not want to have to uh, remove that so that that bracket would fit tight. I just made a, this offset and one above it, which the one above is right there, and then one over here. I want this, the saw edge, I want it perpendicular with the face of the, or with this edge of the table, front edge of the table. I want this as perpendicular, you know, as I can uh, spy it, uh, eyesight it. And that's going to put this handle on the back here just right to put a bracket against the back if it's needed to secure it, but I don't really think it's going to be. So what I'm going to do now is mark these four holes on here, get those drilled. Then we're going to look at, uh, I have to get an Allen or a hex head to remove these. We'll look at the uh, uh, what in our work table uh, surface, getting it fabricated and ready to mount on here. All right, I've got all five of the uh, bolt holes drilled out and bolts uh, got it secured in there. I don't think it's going to need anything else other than that. This is extremely sturdy now. So what we want to work on uh, next is our work platen. I have a piece of 10 inch by 10 inch by 3 eighths thick uh, steel plate that we need to put a slot through here and that will need to run back should be five inches but I'm going to get right here on my I'm going to put a big old B on this side right here to remind me that that's the back and I want to find the center got a mark down that center and excuse me for getting in front of the camera I need to step over here at that distance keeping that flat with the saw over here and back against this this looks like our laid slot needs to come right along there so I'll mark that off as well. These are just some rough marks for now. So what we'll do on the uh, mill is mill us out a slot here. And that will need to go in uh, it, it'll go in place of this piece. So, But before I take that off what I want to actually do is grab a scribe right quick if I mark where this piece is, the factory piece is, in relation to the blade by just scribing a mark there I should be able to line that up this and use it as a template on the piece that we're making this is pretty well lined up in the center. It's a little closer to the edge, 
So what I'll do, it's going to be kind of hard to, to keep lined up here. And I'll just put a couple of marks on each side of where the blade is now in reference to this factory piece. So let's get it off now. Alright, so we'll take this piece and our new platinum and carry it over to the mill and uh, get us a slot cut out and the for the slot cut for the blade and a slot cut for the mounting screws. I'm over here at the mill now and want to get ready to uh, mill our slot first for the blade. So I'm simply going to put a one, two, three block in here. And that's got me plenty of clearance under there. So let's get this alright the slot for the for the blade I don't think needs to be near as big as the slot on this factory uh, I'm sure these pieces are probably just stamped out I'm going to start with a 1 8 inch end mill to mill that slot with and of course that's a small diameter I'm going to take it real slow probably only take about 20 thousandths at a time for depth leave a little need a little more rpm there I'll zero that out I'm going to go all the way through but I like to zero it out just to kind of keep up with where I am and I'm going to come just a little beyond my mark uh, for the blade depth let's see if I can get some coolant over here alright let's go down about 20 thousandths that's 25 I'm going to slow it down I turned my head for just a second and I thought I heard that end mill break. I'm going to step down again. And I'm just going to continue this back and forth, taking about 25 to 30 thousandths at a time until I'm all the way through. Okay, I think we're ready to take our last pass. I don't think there's, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think there's about 10,000 left. We'll take that through. I'm going to go down a little deeper and that's actually going to give me a little bit of deburring action at the same time. That's all the way through so I'll speed it on up a little bit. Wow, I didn't realize what was going on until I turned the machine off and, and heard the outside here on the tin born. It is pouring down rain out here. Alright, we'll get a little bit of this cool it off. I think what I need to do now is carry this piece over to the back to the saw. Clean that out, of course. Carry it over to the saw, check that depth. Then we'll come back and mill out our countersink groove and our groove for the screws. Of course, here's some the slot that we just milled out and I went just a little beyond about 
about a hundred thousandths beyond where we had marked for the edge of the blade. Okay, that uh, groove that we just milled out for the uh, blade uh, was depth was just right on it. So now we're ready to lay out for the holes to actually screw this down, mount it down. You remember we put this little mark on there that was in line with the end of the blade. All right, I've lined that up with what on our new piece is going to be the end of the blade. We also marked each side of the blade. I've got that lined up with the center of the groove we just milled out. So what I'm going to do now is mark out the slot for the uh, for the screws to go in. So we'll turn back to the lathe now and mill out this section that I just described. All right, we're on our last pass uh, for this uh, mounting screw groove. All right, so we've got a good groove in there now. What we need next is the countersink for the head. So I'm gonna put the 3 8 inch end mill in and we'll come back from the same the RO setting here, which just happens to be two and a half inches to zero at this end. All right, I got three eighths end mill in now. All Very seldom will you hear me use the term perfect uh, in my videos, but this came out about as close to perfect as anything I've done. The uh, blade is in the middle, dead in the middle of that eighth inch groove that we cut. Screws lined up good. The next thing we want to do, or I want to wire a switched receptacle uh, for this cord that'll go up to my power outlet. And we'll do that and then we'll finalize this video. Okay, I've got the switch receptacle wired now, and that's nothing more than a uh, combination receptacle and switch together. The saw is plugged into the receptacle, We've got the wires kind of tied it up. You see over here, remember I said this switch does not have a uh, lock position in it, but I just Mickey Mouse it and put a uh, wire tire on there. And the switch, whenever we turn the switch on, of course, it comes on now uh, being plugged into that uh, combination switch and receptacle. Now, the speeds on the side, I use my, this is a combination tachometer and also measures uh, meters per minute and feet per minute. Uh, the meters per minute and feet per, per minute per minute or uh, with this wheel. Measured that and rounded kind of to some nominal values. This uh, the switch on the side speed control has six positions. One gives me uh, 50 feet per minute, two 130, three 175, four was kind of a big jump up to four, uh, 250, five 275, and then the max position is 400 feet per second. 
I've got this set now somewhere between two and three at about 150 feet per second. And I've got a piece of, uh, let's see, this is half inch by one inch by one eighth thick uh, channel line. I'm going to cut just a small piece of this, maybe a half inch long, welded to the side of my uh, uh, welding table for the uh, electrode to hang in. Okay, I think we're ready to wind this video up now. I took the uh, speeds that I measured uh, in the last segment, put them on a little uh, uh, chart, and laminated it and mounted it down here to the table for a quick reference. Uh, this, as I stated earlier uh, in the video, this is going to be to replace that delta uh, combination of wood and metal bandsaw. Uh, hopefully one day I'll get a chance to rebuild that gearbox. But in the interim, I think this is going to serve me well. It's a good stout table. Uh, I think the stand uh, is uh, plenty sufficient to hold it. Uh, it's meant to be a permanent installation. I know there are several folks uh, uh, that make these stands with the idea of getting it on and off quickly. As a matter of fact, there's one guy on YouTube that has a uh, video where he purports to be able to get his... Uh, saw in and out the vertical mount in two seconds. Uh, of course, I don't think he can change his work platen uh, in two seconds. But in any case, if that's what he needs, that's great. I want it in a permanent, I've got the handheld one to use if I need uh, to cut something at the vise or whatever. But I think this is going to be a good addition to the tin barn. I hope you enjoyed the build, and we'll see you on the next video.